Gyan Adab and Gyanpedia platform today. Today as part of our knowledge series under Gyanpedia, we are going to have a talk on eclipses. Our program is titled Drama of the Shadows, Mysteries and Myths of Eclipses. Our presenter tonight is Professor Mustafa Lokandwala, who is my colleague in the College of Engineering, Pune, and a very close friend of mine, and a very active patron of Gyanadam and Gyanpedia. Mustafa Lokandwala is a doubles master in engineering, and as a professor, he has taught in various engineering colleges. Presently, he is a corporate trainer, mentor, and a life coach. He is actively involved in sports and has empired both national and international events. He is presently the President Emeritus of Maharashtra Rowing Association. Astronomy is his hobby and passion. He is the former President of Jyotir Vidya Parisansta, the oldest association of amateur astronomers in India. He has authored two books on the subject, Akashati Lapando on Eclipses in Marathi, and Beyond Solar System on Cosmology. He has already conducted a seminar for us earlier on the solar system called Beyond the Solar System and it's available on the YouTube platform of Gyanada. I now invite Professor Mustafa Lukunwala to take over today's session and enlighten us with the knowledge on eclipses. Over to you, Mustafa. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gyanada Foundation and uh, my good friend Farooq for inviting me and giving me the honor of presenting this topic to you. It's a very interesting topic and uh, let's go through it quickly. I have named it as a drama of shadows because this is the biggest drama, drama of shadows that anyone can see anywhere from the earth. Uh, this picture that I have taken is from um, Malaysia, where they have these uh, stick and figures mounted on sticks where they can move them. What? And through these, they tell stories about Ramayana and Mahabharata, which are popular there. And uh, that is how it works. So before we go ahead, let me talk about the fundamental concepts. So there are few fundamental concepts that I would like to share with you. First is the basics of shadows. The second is the phases of moon, the revolution of the moon and the basic geometry of why and how eclipses occur. So let's go one by one, basics of the shadow. You have, whenever we need a shadow, we have a source of light, a bright light, Maybe it is a point light, it is a bigger light. In our case, the light is the sun. And then we have an object whose shadow is projected on a screen. Now, in most cases, the screen is us, our eyes and our uh, environment around us. So this is how it works. Now, when the source is bigger than the object, you get a small triangle and a small area where no light reaches at all. This is called as the umbra of a shadow, the darkest part of a shadow. Then what happens is, uh, there are certain parts where uh, the light goes from a part of the source and you have a reducing area of darkness and that we call as penumbra. And the rest of the screen, the rest of the area has no shadows because the object doesn't block the light. So this is how the basic concept of uh, shadows is. Let's go to the phases of the moon. Now, what happens is we all know that the moon revolves around the sun. Seen from the sun, as you see on the right hand side, the arrows, the yellow arrows show the sunlight. So in any situation, half the moon is brightly lit and the other half is dark. However, when we see it from the earth, the new moon is the spot where the dark 
side is totally towards us and the bright side is on the other side. So that is called as a new moon. A monthly cycle, the lunar cycle starts from there. Then when the moon is moving around, if seen from north, if it is moving around counterclockwise, then you have, a, you know, the first half, you have the bright side increasing in brightness. And that is called as a waxing crescent. Then it becomes half, first half. And then we have the next, and that is a gibbous moon where almost three-fourths of the moon is lit. And then we have a full moon or as we call as Purnima. The new moon is called as Amavasya and the full moon is called as Purnima. Then the brightness of the moon, the area, bright area which we see goes on reducing. So that process is called as waning cycle. So you have a waxing cycle where the moon goes on increasing in size and you have a waning cycle where it goes. So as you can see in the diagram below, the new moon is completely dark. Then it grows on increasing till it becomes full and then it goes on reducing till another cycle happens. So this is basically all about phases of the moon. So what happens is this whole process roughly takes about 30 days, 29.5 days. And therefore, we have what we call as um, tithi. Every uh, this thing. So we have tithis. And in each of these, we have, uh, you know, like uh, the waxing cycle is called as the shukla paksha. And the waning cycle is called as the Krishna Paksha. I won't get into the detail of that. That's a roughly 15, 14 and a half, 15 day cycle. We will get into the details a little later. Now, what happens is that uh, the moon, when it revolves around the earth, as compared to the star background, it comes back in about 27 days. However, in that period, the earth has moved around the sun also by a small amount, huh? that is roughly one twelfth of the cycle. And therefore, we have, with respect to the sun, the moon takes a little more time. And that more time, uh, you know, the cycle, the lunar cycle, uh, we, what we see is with respect to the moon, sun rather than with respect to the stars. This is called as the moon synodic period. And it is... Uh, 29.53 days, which is approximately a month. And that's where the word month comes from. It comes from the word moon. And that's the whole idea. I hope this is clear. If uh, now we go to the basics of eclipse geometry. The earth is moving around the sun. The moon is moving around the earth. And when they come across each other. Sometimes the moon will come between the uh, sun and the earth. Sometimes the earth will come between the sun and the moon. But, so, if we consider that every new moon or full moon must be an eclipse, but it is not so. It is because the two orbits are tilted at an angle of 5.14 degrees and Therefore, the two orbits are inclined at each other. Now, what happens is when that point where the uh, orbits cut each other are called as nodes. So, when the moon is moving from the south of the Earth's orbit towards north, we call it as an ascending node. And when it is going from north towards south, it's called as a descending node. The ascending node is typically called Rahu and the descending node is Ketu. And, but as you will see, there is nothing there. there. It's just a geometric point that we are talking about. So, I'm sorry. I think I missed out on one slide. So, let's look at types of solar eclipses. What, how and when of the solar eclipses. We have partial eclipse. We have an annular eclipse, which looks like a ring, and we have a total eclipse. And all these things we are going to see and understand how it goes. So the question is, how do solar eclipses happen? So as you see, 
on the right is the sun which we don't see in the picture there is a moon which we see which is moving around the earth and its shadow is falling on the earth now that dark spot in the center the umbra is the path of the total solar eclipse because in that point you see nothing no sun is to be seen okay yeah okay somehow this slide is okay theek hai we'll go ahead now the speciality of the sun and moon system is that as seen from the earth the angular sides of the earth and the moon are almost the same which is roughly half a degree and therefore what happens is the earth and moon's distance uh, and the diameter of the moon is uh, you know in a certain ratio the earth sun distance and the diameter of the earth uh, di uh, diameter of the sun is also this thing so if you take the ratio the ratio comes out to be approximately the sun so here we have the ratio of the size is 400 the ratio of the distance is 38.9 389 so approximately they are the same and therefore we get a very unique phenomenon as seen from the earth called as the total solar eclipse which would not necessarily happen in other configurations in other planets and the satellites okay so let's look at total and partial solar eclipses we have seen the path of the eclipse now when the partial solar eclipse is there in the lighter uh, area the bigger circle if somebody is sitting there or standing there they would see the moon covering only a part of the sun and there we would see the sun as a crescent that is the area where we see a partial solar eclipse on the other hand if somebody is actually at the point of the path of the total eclipse the sun completely covers the i mean the moon completely covers the sun and therefore you see a picture like this on the right so we have what is called as a path of totality that we are going to see the moon sambra moves from west to east at a speed of about 1700 km an hour and it is typically 16000 km long from the starting point to the end point it is at a maximum 250 km wide typically it is 100 to 160 km it is not a fixed quantity because the config we will come to that a little later the penumbral diameter is around 6400 km and as you can see the totality covers less than 1% of the earth's entire surface area moon is very small as compared to the earth so its shadow can cover only a small part of the earth's surface as we see i am showing you a uh, paths of eclipses that will happen in the next 20 years from 21 to 2040 these are various types of eclipses the red ones are the uh, solar eclipses the blue ones are the lunar eclipses and all those things that we will see and this is a very technical thing but i will not uh, this thing uh, go into the details as you can see the curvature of the earth <coughs> and its rotation and all those movements you don't get a straight line but a curve like the flight of an aircraft is never a straight line on the map so this is how it is <coughs> occurrence is a frequency total solar eclipses are comparatively rare events so what happens is on an average about <coughs> an uh, eclipse occurs every 18 months somewhere or the other but at any given place they come only in about 360 to 400 in 10 years which means about four uh, centuries if you take a generation of about uh, 25 years all of us probably one in 16 generations can see eclipses from their own place in a year maximum seven eclipses occur out of which a maximum of five are solar eclipses 
In a year, no lunar eclipse may happen, but solar eclipses happen at least twice. So this is why solar eclipses are always there. Lunar eclipses are not so common. So as we discussed, why every new moon is not a solar eclipse is as you will have seen, the earth and the moon, they have different planes. The ecliptic plane is the uh, plane in which the earth revolves around the sun and the moon's orbit is at 5 degrees as I mentioned earlier and our ecliptic as, is at an angle of 23.5 degrees that is the tilt of the axis which we have seen which gives us seasons but that is of right now of not much concern. So what happens on most new moons? Thank you. The shadow will go either above the earth or below the earth. And therefore, what we don't, we don't see any eclipse in those new moons. So most new moons are like that. As we have seen, the um, object, um, size of the moon or the sun is half a degree, whereas the tilt is about five degrees. And therefore, the probability of that half degree coming into picture is much less than um, you know, the regular process, I mean, every time. So this is how it looks. When it goes, the moon goes above the sun or below the sun, we don't see uh, this thing. It's only when the two orbits coincide, that is, and if the moon is there, then we see an eclipse. So as I was talking to you about moon's orbits and the nodes, now here if you see the red orbit is the orbit of the earth around the sun. For convenience, we have shown the earth as the center and the sun moving around and the moon's orbit is shown in gray. And those two points where the moon's orbit goes from south to north is called as the ascending node and the one which is going out is called as the descending node. So that one is the ascending node, this side is the descending node. Now we come to this concept of cyclical patterns of Earth. What happens is that various, uh, you know, these various phenomena, they are all cyclical. The revolution of Earth around the Sun, the revolution of Moon around the Earth, these are all cyclical phenomena and the tilt and their positions are also very cyclical. And therefore, what we see is that there are some positions which are favorable to eclipses, some this thing are not. And we will see how this cycle works. This is called as the Saros cycle. Its period is 18 years, 11 days and 8 hours. Now, this cycle was found by very ancient astronomers also. And we'll see why that was important. It is cyclical, it is repetitive and it is predictable. The earliest records are from Chaldean astronomers, which is modern day Iraq, that is Babylonia, several centuries before common era. It was named as the Saros cycle by Edmund Halley in 1686. As it is not integral number of days, the cycle shifts by one third of the circumference. If you see, it is 18 years, 11 days and 8 hours. So the whole cycle shifts by one third of the circumference of the earth. This is how it shifts. And if you see, I have shown some of these important uh, this thing, cycle loop some important uh, this thing like for example in 1970 on march 7 we had something and then after that we had 98 march 18 it rotated by one third of the diameter and then we have 2008 where we have march 29 again one third of rotation and then we have 24 april 8 that small error is due to other fractions so it is never repeated at any place. So the whole cycle keeps on going. And this band, uh, which is seen on the left diagram, is an indication of a Saros cycle where lunar and um, 
सोलर इक्लिप्सिस आता है नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द सोलर इक्लिप्स इट इज आई आई टेल यू ऑनेस्टली इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल साइट दैट अ ह्यूमन आई कैन एवर सी Uh, I have seen probably thousands of photographs, but they come nowhere near the reality which you see with your eyes. So uh, duration becomes a very important this thing. So we let's look at some of the factors which are there. Altitude of the sun moon in the sky, if it is near the horizon or whether it is near the zenith that is on the top. The Earth sun distance, the Earth sun distance keeps on varying. um the earth is nearest to the sun around 3rd of january which is called as perihelion and ar around june it is at the furthest point which is called as aphelion similarly earth moon distance keeps on varying also because that's an elliptical orbit the nearest point is called perigee the furthest point is called apogee the maximum duration recorded for totality was 7 minutes and 40 seconds on 11th july 1991 at mexico so how altitude differs as you can see the black part is the shadow and the part where it cuts the circumference of the earth will indicate the duration so when the moon is almost at the top overhead the shadow passes quickly when it is near the horizon it takes a little more time and that's how the duration can vary now this is something that we were talking about i have shown the ellipticities and their eccentricities are greatly exaggerated here they are not so exaggerated so perihelion i have shown there then you have aphelion which is a furthest point of the earth from the sun and then you have moon perigee and apogee so here depending on where the earth and the moon and the earth and the sun are in their orbit the earth sun and uh, earth moon distance will vary so what happens is this is the distance effect the angular size of the moon and the angular size of the sun can vary quite a bit here on the left we see the moon which is at its closest and on the right we see the moon size of the moon when it is at its smallest or when it is most further away near the apogee so similarly for the sun so what are the possibilities that when the earth is at the furthest distance from the sun and the moon is at the nearest distance from the earth we have the longest solar eclipse you reverse the situation and you have the small duration of e eclipse earth so, and then what happens is if the earth is at perihelion and moon is at perigee the angular size of the sun is large very large and the moon is the smallest so what happens is in that case the moon doesn't cover the full disk of the sun and therefore we get what is called as an annular eclipse if you remember i had shown you the picture right in the beginning of a ring shaped sun being seen and that is what the annular eclipse is all about so here we have shown tried and shown some pictures a is a total eclipse because uh, here we have a spot on the earth where the sun is totally covered then we in b we see only partial eclipse in the c we see an annular eclipse because the full shadow does not reach the earth and therefore we see just a ring and these are uh, the shadows of different eclipses and the geometry and the concept behind it i hope uh, you know i am comprehensible so uh, some terminologies that i would like to share with you um the disk of the sun is there the disk of the moon is there the move angular movement wise the moon moves faster than the sun so there is what is called as when they are just touching the circles are touching we have what is called as a first contact and that is where the penumbral eclipse starts and 
then we have the second context where the uh, almost the full disc is covered just before that and that is where we have Bailey's beads and the diamond ring effect. Just remember these words. I'm going to show you some pictures of that because that's a beautiful phenomenon about the solar eclipse. Then we have the totality where the limb moon completely covers the disk of the sun and only the corona is available, visible. Now, before the uh, discovery of solar telescopes, this corona was visible only in the solar eclipse. And this is something that is amazingly beautiful. It looks like uh, something like nacre or the you know, uh, pearl material and that sort of a thing. And that's amazingly beautiful. And then we have, then the moon moves ahead. And then we have a third contact where the first bright light comes and we see again a diamond ring or, a, or the Bailey's beads. And then we have a fourth contact where the disks separate. So these are various points of terminology that you see. So here I am showing you this concept of first contact. Hmm. And then we have prior to second contact after the third contact. As you see, the moon is uh, sun is the moon is moving from right to the left. So and then the fourth contact when they separate. So this is the concept of the movement of the moon and the sun. It's a very spectacular view. I'll tell you. You know, some of my best memories are made of the solar eclipses, and that's. Uh, it's an awe-inspiring phenomenon because suddenly it becomes dark. You start seeing the uh, stars around you. Seeing the stars in the daytime is a very unique experience. Even the birds and animals are uh, confused. And uh, it leads to, you know, very interesting experience. So we talk about now get to certain diagrams. Here we have partial solar eclipse. As you can see, there are some sunspots to be seen. If you can uh, see the pictures clearly at uh, short distance, I think most of you are seeing it on the mobile. So maybe that those dots are not visible. Hmm. So therefore, uh, what I would suggest is, can you tilt your mobile to make it horizontal? So the size of the picture will improve. Yeah, and then it will be, uh, visible. The sunspots indicate, and as you see in that period, the sunspots have slightly moved, showing that the sun is also rotating around its own axis. So we go to what are called as Bailey's beads. We all know that the surface of the moon is covered with craters. So what happens is when at the second and the third contact here, you will see that you know most of the sun is covered, but in from the craters, a bit of light comes in. If there are a series of craters, you see what are called as um, Bailey's beads. And these were, uh, you know, it was first explained by the scientist called Bailey, therefore they are named after him. And uh, this is a picture about the Bailey's beads. And there you have the most famous part of the thing called as a diamond ring. It is usually when one big crater is there and light comes only from that. And this is usually seen again, as I mentioned, in the second or third contact. And it is an amazing, this thing, because the light flashes at you. And uh, it's a very a short period phenomenon, a fraction of a second and it flashes you. It's like a camera flash and amazing. Then we come to the totality, the corona and the chromosphere. So here what happens is the bright disk of the sun is completely covered and this corona-like thing, the crown-like thing is then becomes visible. It is not visible otherwise. And this, as I mentioned, is the uh, beautiful part of the whole eclipse, total solar eclipse, the shimmering, the movement is amazing. And every 
solar eclipse is unique because every solar eclipse, the configuration is different. And therefore, that experience uh, is not repeated. And then we have what is called as a solar corona. As you see, the brightest part is the photosphere. And then you have chromosphere outside it and the corona outside it. And as you see, this is how I, I won't get into the um, technicalities of it, the density or the color or the temperature of it, because that's right now not our concern. One very interesting part that we see in all solar eclipses when the disk is covered is huge flames coming and falling on the back, you know, making a uh, rising from the surface and then falling back on the surface. These are called as prominences. If I were to put the earth on the prominence, any of these, it would be like a dot, a small dot on one of the, these things, uh, anywhere nearby. So as you can see, these prominences, these huge flames are tens of thousands of uh, kilometer large. And that is the beauty. Some of these are uh, prominences can be seen as dark filaments against the back background of the photosphere. Looped prominences, as they are called, are gas ejected from the sun's surface. So mm, that's the whole idea. Some of the interesting things when a, uh, this thing happens is usually you go and stand on a high ground and uh, say some sort of a plateau facing the east and the uh, uh, plateau facing the west and the, you see the shadow rushing at you roughly at 200 kilometers per hour rushing at you and that's a big huge speed you can see the dark edge coming towards you and it is a frightening experience just before the sh uh, shadow reaches you, what you see is because of the atmosphere radiation and the reflection, what you see is dark bands on the ground. It is like thousands of snakes slithering on the ground. A very interesting phenomenon that you have to experience to understand it. Probably I am, you know, the pictures don't do justice to the reality of the phenomenon. Another thing is that, uh, you know, all, every day in our life, we, when we stand below the sun, uh, a tree, we see the leaves form pinhole cameras and we see circular images of the sun <laughs> falling and we see a typical, uh, this thing, um, shadow of a tree with this thing. But in the at the time of a partial solar eclipse also, you see it in form of thousands of crescents on the ground. And that uh, is amazing uh, phenomenon. You can see it a uh, large number of times. Now, here is a unique picture taken of the shadow of the moon on Earth by the Mir spacecraft. It is a disk. In the center, you see the dark area, which is the umbra, <coughs> and a bigger circle, which is a penumbra. And it moves along the surface of the sun. These are some of the pictures that my colleagues in Astronomy Association, Jyoti Vidya Parisons have taken. And at various positions, there were clouds. And if you're uh, unlucky, sometimes the clouds come at the very last moment and you miss out an opportunity. Sometimes you're lucky, it's cloudy, but the clouds shed for a few minutes till the whole thing is visible. Now, this is uh, some of our members have taken this picture from Rameshwaram in Tamil Nadu on 15 January 2010 for 10, 12 years back. And this is the uh, annular eclipse. Now, what happens is uh, looking at the solar eclipse, 
has to be a, is a little risky. I tell you why. What happens is sun is a very bright object. Normally, when we go out in the sunlight, we never look up at the sun and risk our eyes. It's a bright object. You have a lens in your eye and it focuses on your uh, retina and it can burn your retina. Now, why? Otherwise, there is no incentive to look at the sun. But when there is a solar eclipse, there is an incentive to look at the sun there. And that is dangerous, especially if you are looking at through binoculars, telescope, camera viewfinders, or anything that magnifies the light, collects more light and sends it to your eye. So the best thing would be there are two mechanisms which we have to use. One is to use filters. We have now available uh, mylar filters which are designed for um, observing, but if they are not available, welding glass number 13, 14 is the right uh, density for looking at the solar eclipse. Or what you can do is you can project it from a camera on a screen on the, if you see the right image on the right, you can see that the image has been projected. So you're not looking directly at the sun, you're looking at the image of that. This is one thing that we have to ensure if uh, so that we don't damage our eyes. That is the only thing that is there. Now let us look at some of the history. History of solar eclipses is pretty interesting. Ancient, you know, records are there from 4,000 years ago. And even ancient Egyptians observed eclipses 4,500 years ago. Three famous solar eclipse records were made. And the interesting part is in 2137 to 36 BC, before common era, two Chinese astrologers were killed because they failed to predict the solar eclipse. Now, this is very interesting. Then, um, you know, sometimes uh, we have, uh, if you have read the Mahabharata and you have heard the story of uh, Ha Surya Ha Jayadrat, huh? And then uh, Arjuna tells him to kill, uh, Krishna tells Arjuna to kill this guy because the sun has not set. Probably this myth is based on a uh, solar eclipse. This is the first recorded solar eclipse in 1312 BCE. It's a stone picture showing the eclipse. Now this is in uh, lunar eclipse, which was recorded in 1137 in this thing. Why am I able to give these exact dates? It's because Not because the records were so precise, but because now we know the geometry and we can work backwards and know exactly when that eclipse occurred. Right? Interestingly, um, historically significant ex ec eclipses are the fall of Constantinople, which then become Istanbul, was based on the prediction of the blood moon. Uh, Europe was in dark ages and the Muslims had all the uh, Greek and other Almagest books written and they were able to predict this. And they said that we are going to uh, have. And when the blood moon came in, uh, they ran helter skelter and they were afraid and they gave up the war. And that is how Istanbul was captured in 1453. Then there are some interesting, uh, this thing associated with solar eclipses, like in 1868, using a spectroscope from Guntur, India, Pierre Caesar discovered helium. There, were, there was no element whose spectrum was, could be explained by that. So he propounded a theory that there is a, and the word helium comes from the word uh, Greek letter for Greek word for sun helios, and that's why the this thing was named as helium. Another very significant uh, eclipse was in 1919, a uh, hundred years ago, roughly from Brazil. Sometime before that, Einstein had predicted that. Uh, instead of line, uh, light following in a straight line, 
it would be bent by space any object in space because of the uh, what do we say a continuum of space and time continuum this was just theory he had predicted that such a thing would happen and he set up this uh, experiment and found that the uh, light actually could be seen bent in that year and that was the year when einstein's theory of relativity was accepted some of the in of uh, this thing to this thing that nasa has discovered that our earth's actual rotation is slowing down or it was faster earlier and there are so many other small and such major discoveries and uh, bailey was the one who uh, focused his attention on corona and prominences and identified them as a part of the sun's atmosphere some superstitions and facts this is something that we need to talk about the first myth is that there are dangerous type of radiations like cosmic rays are radiated during eclipse the fact is they are just normal sunlight which is there every day there is nothing special that comes from the sun then the second myth is about bacteria viruses increasing during eclipse because of decrease in energy coming to the earth the fact is that a very small part of the earth 1% is covered by total solar eclipse the rest of the earth is getting normal sunlight so the amount of energy coming on the earth is very small so there is no such thing that is happening third myth is the radiation during eclipse are especially harmful to pregnant women and they are not supposed to use uh, knives and other thing to be honest with you 35 years ago when my son was, my wife was pregnant with my son we and there was a lunar eclipse i collected eight friends and we asked her to cut something with the knife and we had a eating party and nothing has happened to my son he is doing pretty well so the fourth uh, myth is you can use suited glass or a pair of positive negative film to watch the eclipse don't do that because that does not control you don't have control about the light coming in and it could damage your eyes pseudo science related to eclipses is very common because people are afraid people use some words like special rays cosmic rays high energy particles special radiation disturbance in energy field are thrown around they have no scientific basis they just sound scientific but that is not true critical thinking and scientific temper are important to counter these types of superstitions i tell you a story in 1988 uh, 1980 i had gone to a place called gadar and it was a solar eclipse around 2:30 in the afternoon and we were setting up some equipment for uh, this thing and what happens is just before the eclipse an old man from the town came and said are punyat na yede aale tancha nadi naka lagu chala aaple gali is what he said and took away all the kids and even in pune in those days the whole traffic had stopped but over the years people have overcome the fear and it is a very beautiful phenomenon which you must try and see at least once in your life so we come to mythology in india the earliest reference comes to samudra manthan story in vishnu and bhagavat puranas there is this big churning a pot of amrut is found and then the devas don't want to share it with the asuras so what they do is they send an apsara called mohini to distract them an asura called swarabhanu comes to know about this so he changes himself to look like a deva and enters their camp and just manages to take a gulp this is the depiction of that story where mount meru is churned by the nag big nag sheshnag hmm <clears throat> but before that Uh, amrut can pass through his head when vishnu comes to know and cuts off his head his head becomes immortal and is called rahu and his body is called the ketu at the time of the eclipse the head eats up the sun but after the after some time it comes out of the throat and that's the end of the eclipse 
So this is the mythology of the eclipse. In China, it is a celestial dragon that swallows the sun. If the eclipse was predicted, then the dragon was said to be controlled by the emperor. If it is not, the court astrologer will kill. And as I mentioned earlier, those two, his and Ho, were killed in 2134 BCE. Then in Babylon, uh, eclipse was considered a bad omen. I mean, it was considered a bad omen everywhere. Now, immediately on detection of the eclipse, the king was immediately unseated and taken away in the inner chamber. The dummy was installed in his place to take the brunt of the bad wives. Probably he was even killed later to Panoti Kadai Chimma. And then we have Greece. Uh, you know, eclipses were caused by angry gods. Gods were angry because humans were petty and fought amongst themselves. So in a war between Lydians and Medes in 585 BCE, when suddenly the eclipse came, soldiers stopped fighting the war. They dropped their arms when the eclipse started. And that ended that war. This is an interesting story again. Um, I will, I'm sharing some pictures. I don't want to uh, talk too much about that. This is that picture of the uh, annular solar eclipse that we, our team observed. Now we come to lunar eclipses. I wanted to hand over uh, now to my friend Peru. We have seen how lunar eclipses happen is when the light shadow of the earth falls on the moon and the umbra goes much beyond the moon's position and therefore it the totality is there for a long period of time. In the umbra we have what is called as a partial lunar eclipse and in the umbra we have a total lunar eclipse. So here, these are some of the things that uh, it always happens at the position of the full moon. Then we have partial and total lunar eclipse. As you can see from the picture, when the umbra is falling, it is a total lunar eclipse. And when it is not, in the penumbra, it is a partial lunar eclipse. So here we see a uh, total lunar eclipse when the sun is completely inside of this thing. Okay. And here we have this picture where the moon is coming and gradually it darkens and you see a crescent and in the center you see what is called as the full moon or the red moon. But uh, here hmm? um, what happens is uh, these are not as rare because what happens when the light falls on the shadow falls on the moon, almost half the earth can see that from any place. You don't have to be in a certain place to see this lunar eclipse. So people see it very much more frequently. And the central part, dark part, is interesting. And we talked about nodes. The same concept applies to the lunar eclipse. I will not go again into that. Lunar eclipses again depend on the sun and the moon's distance. It's the same principle that we talked about in the solar eclipse. Till now, the longest recorded duration is 1 hour 42 minutes. And that is how long it is. Uh, these are the technicalities. Hmm. And we will not get into this because... Uh, then this will go on. The interesting path is where is the um, path of the moon? If it is much above the center line, then the centrality is reduced. When it is exactly along the center, then the umbra is bigger and the shadow is longer. The so lunar eclipse is longer. Now here there is one interesting phenomenon that we see. Unlike the sun, where the moon covers the whole thing and it becomes totally dark and you see only the corona, in case of the moon, it never becomes totally dark. It becomes a uh, coppery red color. And that is because what happens is 
the sunlight that is coming passes through the earth's atmosphere and we all see that the atmosphere scatters the light the blue light is scattered away and the red light is scattered towards the sea so just as we see the sun becoming red in the evening just before sunset that same phenomenon is seen the red light falling on the moon and that makes it look like that copper red is both a red moon blood moon whatever words people use this is a time lapse photography some of our members have taken and from that this thing this is the effect of the earth's atmosphere on totality now sometimes this phenomenon doesn't happen the darker if there has been a say an explosion like it happened last week we have had a big volcanic explosion and the sky became darker so the moon was darker this sort of things happen and uh, i am at the end of my presentation i will now invite farooq uh, to take over and uh, i hope everybody enjoyed the presentation uh, i will now request uh, people to ask questions and uh, then uh, people can one by one so let me know who wants to ask a question i will go through the chat box and i see uh, there are a lot of people who have been uh, commenting one is ranjana chandorkar uh, the mathematics and complications of vectors are explained in fullest way possible yes best memory of total explorers was 1994 from facebook uh, eknath likha hua hai agra ke so uh, first i'll request the panelists uh, if anybody from the panelists like satish ji would you like to speak anything i was going to ask him something else completely different from what he said he he said i talked about the blood moon but there is a expression in uh, english which is called once in a or once in a blue moon or never in a blue moon or something like that so is there something like a blue moon yeah that is actually a colloquial term and uh, in that case what happens is as we talk the period of the moon around the sun it, uh, around the earth is 29.5 days roughly okay now some months will have uh, this thing um, you know 30 31 days now it so happens that a new moon happens maybe just near the beginning of the month and a second new moon happens just before the end of the month okay so at second the full moon is called as a blue moon okay yeah fine that's a I understood it clearly. And another question uh, I have: You said about the slowing down of rotation, slowing down of the rotation of the moon. Now, will that be a problem in the future? Will it make some changes in the weather or anything? Even from the other part of the the, the thing, you know, requirement, the sun and the moon. Any slowing down should cause some changes. in our uh, weather patterns yeah uh, not weather pattern but yes what happens is uh, this revolution of the moon causes tides now causes? those tide tides tides of the moon see in the sun in the sea now a lot of that energy is lost in friction okay so the slowing down happens because of that also but it is so small that nothing is going to happen probably in the next you know 100000 years or even more okay. nothing significant no you know you had given us such long details i have my interest is completely roused and i'm going to ask not you but farooq to organize something where we can go out and see various phenomena etc together one day we can go one evening or one night we can go spend out out in the we say and see what is happening can we do organize that for rock let's see i think the best people is milin halbe and uh, what we can do is you know jyoti reddy parisam sta organizes a star party every month mm -hmm. 
where basics are uh, explained, demonstrated, constellations are shown, and a lot of such activities keep on happening. Probably we can have a program along with uh, Gyanada and have a joint activity. Fantastic. I'm sure there will be people interested. And we can yeah, we can get some telescopes also. So what we can do is show craters on the moon, maybe sets, rings of the Saturn and the moons of Jupiter and so many other interesting things. You have said exactly what I wanted to say. Because this is what, you know, we, I'm 74. I, but I'll be damned if I'm going to cut down my knowledge. I want to expand my knowledge of things. And most of us, I think, would like to see something over and above that. So I'd love yeah. to go, uh, go and have a look. Let's wait for the sure. COVID sure. situation to come. We'll organize something. Yes. Okay, Sandeep, you want to say something? Sandeep ji, you have video on KJ, your early morning Portland. Um, I was just going to tell Sati that the best way for anybody on this uh, on this panel or or uh, people who are participants to join Jyotirvinda uh, Parishan, I don't think it costs that much for membership, and you get automatically plugged in uh, of all the events. Uh, I'm in Portland. I I have a local society, Rose Astronomy, uh, Rose City Astronomy Club that I attend. I'm sure there is a similar thing. There is, if you are in Mumbai, there is a role. Uh, is similar samsa in Mumbai. So find your whichever local town you are in. Literally for fiddly money, you can join, and and you will find interesting people who are extremely knowledgeable, and many of them have telescopes. And these people are more than happy if you say, "Hey, I've never seen Uranus or Neptune in my life." They will immediately uh, help you out and actually show you. So, so Sandy, I, I I know of people who go on down and watch from go to some villaging area where uh, the, uh, the urban sun, uh, lights don't uh, bother them and they have uh, all the scenes etc. But if someone we know, someone and all of us with grey hair can come and go together and have a look at it, it becomes something more interesting than go there with the young people talking about it. So we will learn directly at this age of 74. I would like to learn. Absolutely. Except, uh, except gray hair, some are without hair too. So. <laughs> oh, they I, and we are not talking about those two people. Huh? Okay. No, I, uh, I just uh, want to make a comment for you this, this, uh, about uh, I think phenomenal. First thing is he's an amazing storyteller. Which I uh, I know Mitawa for gosh, 45 years or more. Uh, this was by far one of the most interesting uh, presentations of Eclipse. People just kind of read one or two uh, graphics and they think they know. You know what it is. Uh, was your voice is getting cracked here. Yeah. Your voice is getting cracked. Can you speak a little more clearly, please? Let me hold it closer. Yeah, I'll do that. So um, I did observe the uh, eclipse. I just wanted to show you that this is actually the total solar eclipse mug. From, <laughs> from uh, as you can see on this, you know, it's August. Uh, August twenty. Yeah, August two thousand nineteen, right? Seventeen. Seventeen. And, and I went, uh, I actually hiked up uh, a, a view that was about 4,000 feet high. So there was a, there is a local place where everybody gathered. We had a bus going to the bottom of this view that just we all climbed. And at the top, I think you mentioned about shadow it, uh, uh, coming to you at 200 miles an hour. That's exactly... Uh, Scary and interesting how that happened. And my experience was, it was one of, in Marathi, we call it Abhud. It was an Abhud experience because the whole place turned into colors that I have never seen. It's like orangish, reddish, bluish, greenish, all mixed up together. And there is a, there is suddenly in one second, there is uh, birds are chirping and then there is complete sonata. 
and the whole world stops. It's like one, two and a half or three minutes where you just, I think my, all my suggestion is wherever this is happening, ever in India, you should pick up the next train, bus, car, go there and just be hard for that, for that two minute experience. Nothing like it ever. No, I'm, I'm just saying uh, it's a lifetime opportunity. If anywhere happening, I'm, neither Mujtaba or Parukar, I can describe it. You have to feel it yourself to know what it feels like. That's the only comment. And thank you again, Mujtaba. Uh, this was one of the most comprehensive, okay. detailed presentations. Thank you very much. Sandhi, uh, this yeah. question about uh, um, International Space Station. Yes. People have observed. Uh, I'll just read the question. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, Maya Vora has requ requested Were there any instances of solar eclipse being ob observed by astronauts above, aboard the ISS? Can an annular e solar eclipse on Earth uh, a total for them, or the duration of, is too short due to the speed of revolution of ISS around the Earth? Uh, the angular size will not vary much because the distance is very short as compared to the celestial distances. So it would not become, say, a, 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 what do we say, a angular eclipse. But yes, they would. And the velocity of uh, International Space Station would also, you know, sometimes add depending on the position to the velocity of the moon or sometimes subtract from it if it is going on the other direction. In fact, what happens is uh, in this 2017 uh, eclipse in the US, a lot, some of the people had organized a plane trip to follow the shadow of the moon so that they could see the uh, eclipse for a much longer time. And uh, they had uh, made uh, arrangements, with cameras and other things on the top of the aircraft. A few people with glass top aircrafts have also tried to follow it and photograph it. But these are, uh, you know, individual uh, idiosyncrasies, as you would say. And as rightly Sandhi has mentioned, uh, it's a lifetime experience and all of us must have at least one solar, total solar eclipse as a part of our lifetime experience. So everybody must have it on their bucket list. When is the next one? We'll work it out. I, I don't remember right now. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Sandeep, people have requested that if you can put down the address of the Mumbai society, you know. Kabul Mandala. Uh, if you can put on the chat box or something, or maybe share with me, I'll put it in the in the text in the in the in the, our video is always edited and uh, put on the YouTube. So if you send me the thing, I'll put it in the you know the description below the YouTube video. Afterwards, will, you can send me the answer. I will do that. Uh, and it's easy to just take the whole Mumbai and it will come out with. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, so uh, there is a gentleman called Mr. Dilip who had raised his hand in the beginning of the session. I don't know if he's still there, but if he's there, then. Uh, he can ask his questions. Dilip is not there. Okay. Mm. Anybody else would like to ask a question? Uh, Apurva, would yeah. you like to? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Faru sir, uh, Mustafa sir, uh, I had a list of questions. I have a page full of questions, but you have actually answered them during the presentation. So one thing, I, I if I could just reiterate one thing that uh, the human time and our ability to measure time that this is one day, this is one week, everything is around the lunar cycle. You know, what is one month? What is it? So is it correct? Am I right about this? See, uh, honestly, all our uh, timing, time systems are based on the movement of the sun and the moon. Like a day depends on the earth's rotation around its own axis. A month is a cycle of the moon moving around the earth. The year is a cycle where the earth moves around the sun. So, and all these are fractions that are divided. Now, interestingly, if you have observed, 
that the circle is divided into 360. Correct. Why not 1000? Why not 100? Yeah. So the uh, concept is that the earth moves around the uh, sun in 365 days. Now, this is very near 360 and therefore, and 360 is a, 365 is an odd number. 360 is a number which is um, divisible by many numbers, 2, 3, 5, etc., etc. And therefore, it is a um, higher, highest common factor of a various cycles. And therefore, uh, what we have done is even our measurements are, ma the circle is divided into 360 parts because roughly the earth moves around the sun by one degree every day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, another observation I had, a uh, question which I had is, uh, do eclipses occur more around the equator of the earth? And um, I mean, the, from you had a map which showed uh, all the eclipses till 2040. And it looks like uh, uh, India has almost no eclipses anymore till 2040. Am I right yeah. about that? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, uh, it's, uh, probably what happens is the curvature near the poles makes it uh, less possible. And why does the Saros cycle occur mostly in March and April? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't occur in March and April. I had taken that example. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the cycle is the same set of uh, eclipses occur and repeat after every 18 years. Okay. Some of them are lunar, some of them are solar. Hmm. So uh, the whole cycle repeats. Another thing uh, which you showed us uh, uh, the, the image of the sun and you showed the spots moving. So within a time of seven to eight minutes, the spots move so much. That means no, the sun is... you uh, have observed the partial solar eclipse takes a lot much time. Okay, okay. Huh? that'll be one hour and something, or uh, yeah, the long... yeah. Okay. from okay. the first point of contact to the last point of contact, it would take quite a bit of time. The totality is only for a very short time. Okay. Uh, another question is about X-ray films. Uh, hmm. Are they safe or not safe? No, they are not. Not safe at all. Okay. No. And uh, where would do you get mylar? Because there are a lot of questions on the forum also about uh, uh, safely being able to view. Because yeah. uh, uh, so what happens is every uh, solar eclipse, Ayuka and other astronomy association, including Kagol Mandra in Mumbai and uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics in Bangalore and various other organizations uh, arrange for certified specs and they cost very little, something like 10 rupees for a um, spectacle, okay. which is not a very costly thing. Yes. Uh, however, what happens is you can get them in science shops nowadays. All right. right, right. Whenever you get scientific equipment, you get these uh, glasses. Okay. okay. So that's the only safe one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, now, Milind wanted, Milind Halbe wanted to ask some questions. Yeah, Milind, please. Milind, please ask your question. Not question. I would like to share some inputs about it. Excellent. Astro photography by mobile also. I am experimenting this for last couple of months and I am doing it very well. You can do astrophotography, star tracking, everything with mobile also. Yeah, one better um, um, uh, minute, I will get you on the mobile on the on the video screen. screen uh, so uh, I, I'll have to make you post. So you might have to just uh, you'll be going off, and then uh, I'll promote you to panelists. So you'll be switching off and switching on again. But do do uh, do speak when you come become a panelist. Even even a panelist, they, they switch off and then they come. Uh, in, I mean, the continue. in the meantime, I'll just pass on a comment. If you want to buy the, the mylar filter, buy it when it is not solar eclipse because during solar eclipse, the prices go high five or six times. So do it right when. <laughs> True. No, I, I'm actually thinking of buying it and uh, observing the sun. Otherwise, uh, why do I have to wait for an eclipse? Uh, or will it be unsafe? Uh, say sun uh, towards the evening uh, or very early in the morning. Yes, if you are going to observe the sun, what happens is the sun has what is called as an 11-year cycle okay. whereby 
you what is called as a solar cycle yes. okay, the number of uh, this thing increase and decrease the sun spots so the maxima is coming in 2024 acha aa raha hai abhi matlab okay ha aa raha hai do saal mein aa raha hai okay so, uh, you know you'll see we are very near the maxima so you'll see them uh, increasing in numbers and uh, where is this place in india which says okay this is where you get it like you said gadag is one place where you had to go but uh, any other place that you can suggest because we are stuck by location that we are in pune but if uh, we can plan you know uh, because by the time the newspaper says ki it's going to come in 12 days time or something like that it's too late we have to plan months in advance so that uh, yeah if you're planning let me know because what happens is normally uh, you know we would be sharing the upcoming eclipses people yeah. plan a year ahead mm. or even 6 months ahead okay the real early birds would plan a month uh, a year ahead okay and okay. Uh, where where do you publish this information are you uh, do you have a facebook I, I put it up on the group no, next no. time uh, but do you, do you have a facebook of your uh, astronomers uh, yeah astronomy jyotirvidya parishad usta has its own facebook page so that's the good place to start yeah you can join that i'll do that i'll do it immediately yes sir okay milit what i was telling that you can use your mobile to get good astro photography mobile is now app with the various features and it's low cost and you can go just out and click images giving 30 second exposure and everything you can get really good pictures i am doing that for last two months going yeah, out you have been putting some good uh, photographs on the gyanpedia uh, uh, group of ours uh, yeah milind is an amazing photographer <laughs> <laughs> okay acha uh, uh, milind thanks here yeah, and uh, it was good that you could join and uh, i think you are this has been Postpone a little bit your process procedure. Yeah. Okay. Next, doesn't matter. Schedule next next week. week huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have Mr. Leslie, my good friend. He has made a comment. He wants to confirm it. Hmm. He says that the diameter of the sun is four hundred times the diameter of the moon. At the same time, the distance between the moon and the sun is four hundred four hundred times the distance between the moon and the earth. Hmm. Is this correct? Statistics? Yes. Approximately correct. and therefore the angular size of both the moon and the sun are the same almost it's like uh, you know half a degree okay so uh, for all the viewers who have been present who want some details uh, sandeep has put in all the details of the uh, in the chat box so if somebody wants to copy it and keep it he has written about the akash mitra mandal astronomical society of india And he has given a list of all of them. I'm sure if you Google them, you'll get all of that. He has also put in a a link of Kagol Mandal, KagolMandal.com, which people can list down. And uh, uh, to all of you, if you uh, um, uh, can, uh, I'll be putting down my mobile number on the uh, uh, in the chat box. If you send me your WhatsApp uh, messages. i can uh, send you the link of the gyani gyanpedia whatsapp group that we are having in which people like sandeep milind uh, apurva and uh, mustafa and all these people who are satish kohl all of us who are interested in science and uh, uh, nature and environment we put in all our two bits there and then if you want to become a part of the gyanpedia it's a very small group you only take very few people so that we don't you know uh, have unnecessary messages going on but a lot of information is being brought by these very good uh, 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 you know people who are educated in all this stuff like we had a program on the tigers we are on the birds we are now at the end of february we are going to have a program on water so there is some person called as waterman of railways he is going to give a program introduced to me by, by apurva only so all these programs will come to you and all the details that you want can be shared on this whatsapp group So please write down the number. I put my number down in the in the chat box. Tushar Shingar has also put my number down. So if you send me your WhatsApp uh, on the WhatsApp or hi or something, I will put you on the on the list. Maksud uh, Maksud Usain, would you like to say something? Maksud Bhai, you would like to say something? Then you, I can allow you to say Maksud Usain. <coughs> 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, if everybody is through, then maybe I can. Uh, uh, Masuji, you want to say something? You can unmute yourself. Okay. Anybody else wants to say anything can raise your hand and I can then allow you to speak. So. Mustafa sir, uh, please uh, write the uh, name of the uh, group, the Pune uh, Astronomers Group in the chat. I will be putting it in Gyanpedia WhatsApp group. All right, 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 sir. Right. Okay. So, Moyan, 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 you want to say something? <laughs> uh, hello, good evening, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Merchant sir and uh, Lokhanwala sir for... Uh, organizing this presentation. It was a pleasure uh, hearing you and, uh, you know, it was very informative uh, apart from the science part as well as uh, a super mix of mythology, as I said in my comments as well. Uh, thanks for answering my query uh, too. Uh, I just uh, had a comment to share uh, a personal experience uh, as Sir pointed out about the annular solar eclipse uh, of 2010. So I was uh, studying in Pune at that time um, uh, during my mechanical engineering, we had a group, uh, an astronomy group in uh, College of Engineering Pune. And uh, we were fortunate enough to visit all the way to Rameshwaram and uh, see the annular uh, solar eclipse uh, at that time. Um, so yeah, that's why uh, I just asked related uh, question that, yeah, is it is it possible to uh, see the same uh, from ISS or if it would convert uh, to a total solar eclipse if we are just 400 kilometers uh, above the surface of the earth. So yeah, I, uh, and as uh, many of you shared the experience that it's just wonderful, as Sandhi sir also said, uh, all the different changes which, which occur uh, in the nature when uh, the eclipse occur. So, uh, and thanks for sharing your number two. It would be a pleasure to keep in touch uh, regarding such uh, Presentations. Hey, on the media, like a WhatsApp group, eh, nah? This is a very Ji. powerful group. All knowledgeable people mm -hmm. are there. Eran yeah. Gurucha, Satish Koth, Apurva Badur, train expert. Then we mm -hmm. have War of Bird expert. Then we have uh, somebody from Nagpur is expert on tigers. We have a media group is strong. Eh? If you want to be a member, just send me a WhatsApp message on that phone number of mine. Achha, yeah, sure, have... sir. I'll, I'll do the needful. I'll text yeah. you. Chinmay is Sandeep. Chin, Chinmay Sandeep Kulkarni has been putting a lot of information in the chat room. Chinmay ji, would you like to say something? I can give you the permission to chat here. Hold your Chinmay sir. Uh, no, I, uh, this is my daughter's laptop. Her name is Chinmay. I am Sandeep Kulkarni, her father. She is engaged in some other uh, cultural event uh, at home. Uh, Haldi Kungfu. Now, you are a Pune, you will understand it. <laughs> so, that Sankranti Haldi Kungfu is planned uh, today evening. I am based out of Mumbai, but my parents, uh, rather last full month I was in Pune, I stay uh, near uh, Sarasbag. So, your uh, Jyotir Vidya Parishanstha is quite near to me from my parents' place, but uh, currently I work in Mumbai, in Mahindra. So, I uh, that's why I asked uh, the Kagol Mandal address that is in Mumbai. I will be definitely be interested in joining this group and understand it's quite interesting from my college days also. And I also hail from uh, College of Engineering Pune, but I don't recall there was a, some astronomical group at that point of time. I passed out of 1990. You were very famous in Ferguson College, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was part of Ferguson College also. In fact, I was a uh, student of... Uh, New English school Pune and we had a planetarium and that created the interest in me about this astronomy and all. Oh, Ferguson mein do time ke log te, jo mein hai, astronomy. No, I definitely not Okay, Sandeep, want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to show you what a what a mylar filter looks like. Okay. It's, it's a highly uh, reflective filter. As you can see, uh, one thing if you do buy this filter, don't drop it or, or touch it or scratch it because even a slightest scratch can pass enough sunlight to, to screw your eye. So you have to be very careful when you when you make sure that you don't actually touch it. But this is uh, this is the one you can see. This is uh, used on my SLR uh, mm -hmm. when I took the photograph. But this you can use it two 
throughout the year to, to look at the sun. There okay. is no, some of the highly specialized ones, by the way, are, are spectroscopically, spectroscopically defined for a certain angstrom range. So for example, you can get a filter that's 2.5 angstrom in width, which passes barely any light, but good enough to see sun uh, in a detail. That's how efficient these are. And as Mishaba said, please, for God's sake, don't use negative film or you know, anything else. You have to use scientific filter. Otherwise, you're just screwing up your uh, eyes forever. In your Thank you, Sandhi. And I think uh, uh, with this, uh, with the permission of everybody in the panel, I will uh, end this program. And I want to formally thank Mustafa ji to take out his precious time and uh, come to uh, our office and make this presentation. Uh, for the benefit of everybody, this program is going live on Facebook. We'll be putting the link of the Facebook again in the, our chat groups and all from where you got the invitations. And uh, please do join us at the end of the month for the program on the waterman of, uh, waterman of uh, the railways. Uh, who is going to bring a program, uh, what he did in the wheel axle plant in Bangalore. Then in the March of next year, next month, March 26th, we are having somebody who's Sandeep's friend who's going to speak on telescopes and uh, uh, cosmology. And so Sandeep and uh, Mustafa will be asking all the questions. I am only a catalyst, though I'm an engineer. I to go to Vaishali. Anyway, so... <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I missed that part of the astronomy. Anyway, so thank you everybody, and with this, I take the permission of everybody to end the program. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.